from the fact that your legality and your morality have fundamentally different, uh, different functions. So you end up then with it becoming a part of the culture and a large set of people staying out of the system as is seen in this uh, Kannada proverb which emerged at the time about courts which says Ketan Sota Sotan Sota Basically the winner, uh, the winner loses, the loser dies. Okay. So, and it's which create a system where large sections of the population avoided the courts. Yeah, avoided the British courts. So it's in this kind of a, of a situation with the gap well into the church that you come into the post-independence era. And in the post-independence era, the, the ones who were looking at morality and building a, trying to build a system from there were basically the Gandhi thought. And by 42 itself, Gandhi was not very relevant. Uh, intellectually, his ideas were not were not really accepted. So by independence, the entire dominance of rationality came up. So they moved primarily from legal positivism of the Benthamite kind, that is essentially of commands of the sovereign, there's no longer personal commands of the sovereign. But he looked at rationality as the basis, and he wanted to have an alternative set of commands. So the constitution was designed to be that alternative set of commands, that ultimately that would be unchallenged. It would play the role that the sovereign's commands play in British So. The, and the legality of the system or the, or the legitimacy of the system was built into the legal norms. So when that happened, right, you have the constitutional source of commands and when that happens, you build the, the law as, as something supreme. Right? Essentially that you would. Sometimes you do it by simply taking in criminal law, bulk of the Indian Penal Code is still the 1864 with amendments. Right? So you have, uh, and some of the amendments which you would not, which I would argue would go against current morality, like Article 377, are quite are retained and quite reinforced uh, by, by the legal system. But what this does, if you have a clear set of commands like that, is that every time I want to change, <coughs> bring a law more in connection with social change, I need to change the constitution. I need to amend the constitution. So there's an internal tendency to amend the constitution, it's, it's done well over a hundred times, uh, right since the period. So essentially when I want social change, in the pre-independence period, I would have had a social movement, or tried to bring about a social movement. In the post-independence period, when I want social change, I try to, uh, I have to amend the constitution as my first step. Right? Now this argument was that since the constitution was built on modernity and some sense of social change, it would be a dominant, the morality that was there within it will dominate society as a whole. Will begin to dominate society as a whole, especially with the coming of modernity. Now this was, was Nehru's from, from the belief that with the coming of modernity, and to some extent Ambedkar as well, that with the coming of modernity, you would have the earlier modality being destroyed and the new individual based modality and, uh, built into the constitution would dominate. Right? Unfortunately, for three reasons, that has not really happened. First is that there are diverse moralities. You have a large country, and the very nature of local morality changes very much. So when I come up with a set of moralities that is constant across the country, you have a problem. I think all the wildlife of people study, and even other studies for us, you know that the tribals, when you build a national park and protect the rights of of, uh, of the wildlife by preventing hunting and gathering. You're simultaneously ensuring that tribals can no longer hunt and gather. What they have done for centuries overnight becomes a new thing. So they, at one stroke, they're just doing what their forefathers did. At one stroke, they become criminals. And sometimes they join up with criminals like Mirafan and, uh, and institutionalize that process because they have no option. At one stroke, you've been checked. So their morality, the gap between their morality and the law and the environment remains large at one level and gives them an incentive to break that. The second element that happens is the social change to the constitution. That is that you bring in an element, you change the law, and the morality catches up with that, and then you change the law again. Right? So each time you keep changing the law for social change, you're further uh, increasing the distance between legality and the accepted morality. And the third is that it leads to a greater, uh, that the delays in the judicial system, right, make people 
that we bank once again on persuasion. That the people return to a desire for persuasion, saying that complete proof will not happen, everybody will escape. And then once you return to persuasion, you are going back to that, uh, to that uh, uh, quote that, uh, that uh, Prabhupada made, that Indians prefer the quick justice along with the China part, even if it implies an element of partiality. And that revival of that is come, and modern technology rather, until this point you could say modern, or Nehru believed modern technology would push us towards the constitutional, the idea of the jurisprudence built into a constitution. But what we have instead is a return to uh, the earlier system. Essentially the media, if you take it out, meets all the requirements of the traditional panchayat system. Right? It's based on persuasion rather than complete proof. It's based on large numbers. Right? The judgments made by a channel are judged by the public at large who watches the channel and therefore would either switch off or keep it on. Right? The basic logic of the panchayat system has, has returned. So people at one time spoke of the new technology leading to a global village. That may, may not be entirely true, but it has certainly led to an Indian village. And you see today the rise of the panchayats emerging. So in this kind of a system, where the gap between legality and morality shows no signs of, of being reduced, corruption becomes a way of life. Right? Co cooperative corruption becomes a way of life. And once cooperative corruption becomes a way of life and large numbers come, it's very difficult to distinguish or to actually in practice say that is non-cooperative corruption and this is cooperative. It creates an atmosphere where non-cooperative corruption also gets ignored. So essentially, one would look at the issue of corruption as a part of Indian culture only in the sense that the gap between legality and morality is being large at this point. Sometimes transmuted and then uh, progressive. Uh, my question is 